here at WRNR and TV 10. We're now joined by the voice of the Washington Wizards, Dave Johnson. Dave, how are you today? You know, this might be a first for me. I'm actually doing an a interview from the, the tarmac at Dallas Airport. We're getting ready to fly to Detroit. And actually, they moved up our flight time a little earlier today because uh, tomorrow, uh, and maybe it's uh, on in Martinsburg, it's, uh, we've got the Wizards and Detroit Pistons, but it's a 12 o'clock start tomorrow, so uh, so we can get into town earlier tonight. Uh, we're actually flying out earlier. So anyway, this is, uh, to give your listeners, this might be a first. I'm on the tarmac. At Dulles Airport, looking at a 757 that we're about to get on. Well, we appreciate the time, as always, uh, when you join us here in the Eastern Panhandle, Dave. And let's jump right into it and get your thoughts on uh, yesterday's news as Wes Unsell Jr. announced that he's going to the front office. The Wizards decide to go with an interim head coach, Brian Keith, for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, it's a situation where we're at the, as we've talked about it, the start of a rebuild, and there's going to be changes. And that means players, and that means, you know, obviously coaches. Uh, yesterday, the development of the players has been strong. With, with the, it was brought up yesterday by President Michael Winger, General Manager Will Dawkins. The, the reason for the move uh, was that they just sensed a lack of competitiveness. competitiveness pardon me. Um, and uh, they were hope, they're hoping a new voice in Brian Keith will help change that. And it's something that, that Wes Unsell also noticed. In other words, it, it's not as simple like it, it's lack of competitiveness. So does that mean you have to yell more? No, it, it's just it's just not that simple. And this is why there are changes uh, in sports. And, it, and, and uh, it's something that, uh, again, you think that your own office dynamic when there's a change in, in leadership, it really gets people's attention. As, and as Michael Winger said that when he addressed the players, he said, you know, who in this locker room is responsible for this? And they all raise their hands. So you can't, obviously, fire all the players. Um, and, and, again, th- this season is not about uh, making the playoffs. This season is about the start of, of a, a journey that hopefully will bring the team sustained success. Uh, but part of that is also, you know, it, it, you're not counting wins necessarily, but you're, you're counting improvements in, in culture and other metrics. And, and that's where the change. But let's unsell the, the good thing will be still a part of the Wizards front office. And a guy that could be a part of the future in terms of the Wizards made a trade. They went out and got Marvin Bagley. And he has come in, former second overall pick, had a ton of potential coming out of Duke, just hasn't really found his landing spot yet. But since coming to Washington, has kind of looked like the player that people expected him to be when he came out of college. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's the thing about the NBA. It's, it's about fit and opportunity. I mean, I think about we played Utah last night, and Lowry Markkinen, you know, didn't fit in Chicago. Well, he had 29 or 31 points last night and continues to – to shine and, and be a leader with the Utah Jazz, so it, it fit with uh, with him. Uh, you know, we had a, a dramatic example. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Marvin Bagley, but we had Ben Wallace here in Washington, uh, and and we all knew Ben was what he was, and and a fine NBA player. Um, but you're, you're thinking, all right, this is going to be a great role player, and and he'll you know average five points and eight rebounds a game or something like that. He goes to Orlando, and I think they do him the same way. He gets to Detroit, not that they viewed him differently, but he ends up in the Hall of Fame. He has a Hall of Fame career. Now, he can have that because of of the players uh, that he's surrounded with. He can take on a role that becomes such a specialty that he earns a Hall of Fame uh, career from it. So uh, when these players come out of college and and there's potential like you see in Marvin Bagley, and, and it just doesn't quite work out in Sacramento, and obviously it didn't work out necessarily in Detroit, um, in terms of of living up to that number two billing, uh, but then so far, uh, yeah, he's produced like a number two draft pick, number two overall draft pick with the Washington Wizards, and that that's that's part of again uh, the journey, the the uh, rebuilding process that you not only want to hit on your draft picks, but the Wizards certainly believe they've hit on their draft pick in Bolo uh from this past season, but but you also it's about making trades and, and getting you know the right pieces going forward and. Uh, with Marvin Bagley, and they make that trade, uh, he has another year left on his contract. So that means essentially the, year, the Wizards get a year and a half to decide 
you know, okay, is he going to be part of, uh, of, of the future? Uh, again, uh, not everybody's going to get traded this on this. Some, but some players are going to stick. Denny Abdi, I think, is part of the future. You know, Kyle Kuzma, I think, is part of the future. That's not saying he won't come, come up in trade talks, but um, that's, that, that's the exciting part. Where it's, a, it's a discovery process that we're on here right now, and, and this is what we knew we were getting into. This is what fans, quite frankly, uh, ask for. Now, you know, when you ask for it, uh, you, sometimes when you've lost whatever we've lost in a row or whatever a record is, it's easy to say, well, wait a minute, we didn't, <laughs> that's not what we signed up for. But that's the way it works in the NBA. And there's so many examples of that, whether it's Oklahoma City, Orlando, or, uh, or even San Antonio, quite frankly. Uh, you know, a premier franchise who is going through a similar record right now, but they have Victor Wembanyama. And they have a player to build around for the future. Uh, look, when San Antonio built their, their dynasty, if you will, or started having success late 90s, the year before uh, Tim Duncan came out of college, David Robinson was hurt and missed the entire season. Uh, so San Antonio had a bad record. San Antonio ended up with the number one pick. And you end up with David Robinson and Tim Duncan on the same team. Dave, I want to go back to... Uh Interim head coach Brian Keefe, uh, what have you heard either from players or from around the team, their relationship with him and uh, kind of just his style? Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, the vibe is good. I mean, he's worked, worked with uh, these players all season long. He was hired by uh, West Huntsville Jr., so it's not going to be a, a, a jarring change from that standpoint. But, um uh, what his focus will be, uh, primary focus, number one focus, is this team is just just not uh, as good defensively as, as they need to be or defensive competitively as they need to be. Now, uh, you know, people said to me, well, Wes Unsell Jr. was, you know, a defensive. It, Wes Unsell knows. Brian Keith knows. It's, it's how do you get these guys um, to, to buy into to, to playing defense? And it's, there's not a magic scheme necessarily a defense in the NBA. It does come down um, uh, to, to man-on-man defending to begin with uh, because if you're always helping, you're, you're putting yourself in a, in a vulnerable position. So, uh, you know, quite frankly, that's going to be the challenge for Ryan Keith, that can you make, can he, as, as a new voice, if you will, help this team get to a better defensive uh, defensive place? Uh, going forward into the off season. Um, you know, Brian Keith has a throwing reputation. He, we mentioned the Spurs or he came, comes from a championship organization. Um, so he's, he's got the track record. He's, he's paid the dues. He'll get a chance to audition, but the Wizards have, have made it clear they're also going to do a comprehensive search in the offseason. Now, Keith is essentially auditioning for that role and, and he could, uh, end up earning that role, but, but by virtue of the fact he's interim coach right now doesn't necessarily mean, uh, he will be taking over at the end of the season. And, guys, I, I hate to cut this. Our first ever Martinsburg interview on Tarmac, but I'm getting the, the wave signal. i got to get on the plane <laughs> so I can be on the air tomorrow in Detroit. But, as always, we appreciate the time. And, and, and next time, I, I promise I won't schedule it too close to an airplane flight. No problem, Dave. Thank you for the time, and uh, have a good broadcast.